morning for coyotes ought to be really good. The reason why I love this field because it's wide open. You can see coyotes coming from a long way. Right now the wind's in my face. The direction I expect to see the coyotes come from is in the direction of the wind, so they shouldn't smell me. This morning when I was setting up, I had a couple of deer walk right up to me that never smelled me. They eventually saw me, but they really didn't know what I was, so they just turned around and kind of trotted off. As a matter of fact, they're still across the field right now. My general rule of coyotes are going to come. They'll come within five minutes of you calling. Uh, bobcats usually take a little longer. Bobcats are harder to call, though. Uh, for every ten coyotes I call, I'll call one bobcat. I haven't called a bobcat in a while, so I'm hoping this morning is my morning. The coyote is the ultimate survivor. While the ranges of many wildlife species are shrinking due to human encroachment, the coyote's range keeps expanding. It makes its home in the woods, deserts, prairies, suburbs, and cities all over North America. It feeds on just about everything it can find. In my region, he's an opportunistic omnivore that eats prickly pear fruit one day and then dines on dead cattle, rats, or rabbits the next. So with a little bit of biological knowledge on my side, I use an electronic collar that mimics the sound of an injured rabbit. The sound will get his attention while he's in the brush. When he comes to take advantage of his easy meal, he'll see the decoy. fast. Like I suspected the coyote came out of the southeast corner of this field and he came like coyotes do really fast. He was trotting across the field. He saw the decoy. He uh, made a beeline right towards it and not until he was on top of it did he realize there was something wrong. And I think he would have went ahead and ran off but I made that sound. If you, if you listen to the video again, I made that whoop sound and it made him stop and turn around and look and when he did that I was able to get off a few more shots. I don't know how many shots I got. I mean, probably eight or 10 maybe. Uh, hopefully they turn out pretty well. It was an exciting morning and it's, uh, I mean, you got all that prep, all that setup, all that time that you spend in the field for those just few seconds, but it all makes it worth it. The thing I really like about this field is how wide open it is. Each fall the farmer will come out here and plow it in preparation for planting wheat and before the wheat comes up or when the wheat's still pretty small is a really good time to call for predators just because you can see them coming from a long way. This particular morning I was set up about right here. From this location the sun is coming in from this direction. And this particular morning, the wind was blowing right in the face, so it was coming kind of from a southerly direction. The coyotes live back in these hills over here, so what I hoped for was I could sneak into my, my position, start calling, and then the coyotes would hear it and they would come running. And it really worked like clockwork. So within a couple of minutes of me turning the call on, that coyote actually came in from this way. And so my call was about right here maybe 20, 30 yards away from me. And so he ended up going right by it, ran here, got the shot, and then he eventually ran off into the brush this way. And I never saw him again. But all in all, a pretty nice setup. Uh, really, location is key for photographing predators just because with coyotes, they come so fast and from so far away, you've got to have time to see them to be able to compose your picture, get the focus locked on them, and then shoot the frames. I ended up taking about 14 shots of the sequence when the coyote ran by. 
But I'm not going to show you all those. I'm going to really concentrate on three shots, which are my favorite of the sequence. This first shot is when I first got the coyote to stop. And you can see there his eyes are really intent on looking back at the decoy. Just, in my opinion, a beautiful shot. and Really, everything works good on this. Uh, the background is, is nice and out of focus. It's a good distance away. See, I've got plenty of separation between the coyote and his, and his background. The lighting on this is just beautiful. Even though it's side lighting, he's got his face turned right back into the sun. And you can see the highlight in both eyes as he's looking back towards the decoy. Uh, with a really intent look on his face. His ears are laid back. He's a little bit confused. He's trying to figure things out, but I, I just love the pose of the coyote here and love the look on his face. My next favorite picture is this one. This is the last picture I took before he ran off because then he perked his ears up, changed his head angle just a little bit, and just really taking one last second to try to figure out what's going on before he runs off. Again, background's great. Love the pose. Love the look in his eyes. Love the color in his eyes. The lighting, that early morning sunshine is, is just perfect on this coyote. But really my favorite picture is the first one I took in the sequence, and it's this one. I was actually panning when I shot this, and it's a happy accident. You know, the, the coyote's feet are out of focus. His body's out of focus. But if you look at his eyes... And you look at his face, it's perfectly in focus. And you can see the intent look on his eyes and his ears are up. And he thinks he's going after an easy meal. And that's before he realizes the gig is up and the decoy and the sound that he was coming to wasn't what he thought it was. But again, this picture right here, just my favorite of the entire sequence. And I just love this shot. Love it so much. I don't get a whole lot of prints made, but this one is hanging on my office wall.